If you've never shot trap before, it can be kind of an intimidating sport. Walking up to the line, not knowing the procedures, how it all works. When you understand trap, it's actually a pretty simple game. So if you've never shot it before, this video is gonna give you a basic understanding so you can walk up with confidence and learn to shoot the game of trap. Let's go. First things first, when you come into the clubhouse to the front desk to check in, make sure you have an uncased, unloaded gun. Action open. That's our policy here at ASP and a lot of other clubs are gonna have something very similar. So after that, got your rounds, let's get up to the trap field. So when we're walking up here, this is a trap field. It might look a little confusing, but it's actually very simple. We have five different posts. Come on up here, post one, post two, post three, post four, post five. Now these are all at the 16 yard line and you'll see that there's a long stretch of concrete that goes back. That is for the discipline of handicap. So if you're a real good shooter and you're shooting handicap, you're gonna move further back. We're gonna focus on singles today, which is shot from the 16 yard line. One other discipline that there is is doubles. That's also shot the 16, but as the name implies, when you call pull, it throws two clays instead of one. Trap shooting has been going on since the late 1700s in England where they would actually shoot at live pigeons released from, you guessed it, a trap. Well, that eventually was outlawed or kind of died off and we still call it trap. But instead of shooting pigeons, we shoot clay pigeons. Now you know. So there's five different posts. You can have up to five shooters on your squad. You can also have less. It doesn't have to be five, but up to five. The shooter at post one is gonna start things out. Now here's a little formality or etiquette to give you a heads up on that I didn't know the first time I shot trap. The shooter at post one is gonna say, squad ready. Kind of give an indication and a courtesy to them that they're all ready. Score ready. Score gives you a nod or indicates that he's ready. And then you say, let's see one. Or if you're using the voice machines, you say, pull. And a clay will go out. Trap is very limited in its target presentation. It's gonna come out at the same pitch every time, minus any wind factors. That can have an effect on whether a clay rises or drops a little quicker. But basically, we're gonna throw a target, pull, and you can see that presentation. That was kind of straight out, a little bit quartering to the right. Now, if we go behind the trap house, we'll take a look at this machine and you'll actually see what's happening behind the scenes. So this machine is actually gonna oscillate back and forth at random intervals. So if you take a peek inside here, when I throw it, it starts to oscillate. Next guy gets up, pull. You can see it doesn't change necessarily a lot. And so we're seeing a limited presentation to the left and to the right. That's really all there is to it. Simple, right? After all the shooters have had the opportunity to see that clay come out, they can protest if they believe something's out of standard. If not, it's time to shoot. The guy at post one is gonna start us off. Pull. And now it's the guy at post two turn, right? Guy at post two is gonna close his gun or put his shell in. That's one of the things to remember when you're shooting trap. If you have an over under, you can have a shell in ready to go. If you have a semi-auto, you can put it in the chamber, but do not close your gun until it's your turn to shoot. So I might stand here and wait the guy in front of me shoots, I'm already gonna have my feet in the position I wanna shoot from. As soon as he shoots, pull. The guy at post two is shot. Now the person at post three, the gal at post four, the child at post five. Make sure we have all our bases covered. And then it goes all the way back to post one until everyone has shot five rounds at their post. At that time, we're all gonna rotate to the right. So if I was on post one, action open. In fact, the score will usually say what everybody shot. Action's open, rotate. At that point, this guy moves here. This lady moves here. This child moves. You get the idea, right? Everyone rotates, but here's the one important thing. This is a piece of etiquette. The person on the fifth post, once they've shot and we're rotating, is gonna make sure their actions are open. A break action, you can hold the gun like this. Semi-auto, action would be open, and you can hold it up in the air. Rotate to your right and walk past everybody like this. 
And then we're gonna continue doing that until each shooter has shot five rounds at all five posts, making around a total of 25 shots. So here's what a scorecard's gonna look like. I already shot, I hit my first one. Millennial Farmer's up, he shoots, hits it. Tyler Knott shoots, hits it. Garrett Streitz shoots, oh, he missed the first target. Then Tom Townsend's up, he hits it. Now the round's over. 24, 21, 21, zero, 25. Oh, look at that. Garrett, he couldn't hit a darn thing. We're not gonna get deep into tips, but there's just a few considerations to help you start shooting well. Two things we're gonna talk about are hold points and focal points. What do we mean by a hold point? What I mean is where do you hold your gun when you're mounted up before you call pull, right? That's gonna change depending on what post we're at. So if you're at post one, you see the stack of clays on the far left side? These are general references. These can be tailored and customized depending on your shooting style. We're gonna hold at that top clay, maybe a foot, around a foot off the top of the house. You could hold on the house if you want. You could hold a little higher. Again, general reference. So post one, that's where we're holding far left corner. Post two, now we're basically splitting the difference between the center of the house and the left side, right? So the next stack of clay is over. That is our hold point. Post three, now we're right over the trap house, centered. Can you guess where we're going next? Where's the next hold point? Second to the last one on their right. And now we're on the right corner of the trap house. I personally like to hold about a foot off to the right because then when you get those hard right targets, you don't have as much visual obstruction. So hold points are about minimizing your gun movement, depending on what post you're at, and giving you ideal visual pictures. Try not to block the clay with your gun at all. So as a right-handed shooter, if I hold off to the right and down low, right off the top of the trap house, about a foot or two off, and I get a hard right, the clay is not gonna ever go behind my gun. I'll see it the whole time. So something to consider there as far as hold points. Now focal points, that's another point. Our focal point is where we focus with our eyes because our eyes are not gonna be focused here. Huge key for new shooters. We are not focused on the bead, we're focused on the bird. But when we call pull, the bird hasn't come out yet. So where are we gonna put our eyes? That's the question. So I like to put my eyes 10, 15 feet-ish or more beyond the trap house, find a specific spot centered right out in front of the trap house. Then my eyes can pick up that clay as it comes out and my gun starts to move. What some shooters try to do is that clay comes out, they start to move and then they try to aim. They try to put their bead on it. That's called aiming. We don't aim shotguns, we point shotguns. See it, respond. This is a hand-eye coordination game. One other thing to consider is your footwork. We could go into detail about this. Your footwork can change at every post. That's a little bit more advanced level. But basic level footwork, some shooters square themselves to the target like this. There's major issues with this. I've, I've seen a lot of rifle shooters especially, they're used to shooting like that. Well, if you're shooting a static target, you can get away with that. But if you're shooting a moving target, you have to swing on it. So if I'm set up like this, and that clay comes out hard left, I'm already binding at my hips just trying to turn left. I wanna set myself up in a position. I know my targets are gonna go, there's a white stake out there for reference. My targets are gonna go anywhere from that white stake to another white stake. I kinda know where I need to be able to move hip-wise. And so getting your feet in a position where you can easily swing on the left, right, middle targets without any hindrance on your hips. That can be accomplished by your stance, by flaring out toes, moving your toes in different ways. But just remember, when you get up there, try to get your hips in a position and your feet in a position where you can easily swing without hindrance. It becomes really important on post five on the hard rights because check this out, if I am too, too much facing that way and I get a hard right pull, I'm already starting to get resistance in my hips. 
that will cause me to usually miss the bird. And if we go down to post one, it's the opposite bird that we have issues with. It's the hard left, right? So if you're set up in a stance, something like this, and that bird comes out left, you're more than likely gonna miss behind it. So I wanna be in a position, I might flare my toe a little bit. There's a lot of different preferences on stances. That's why I'm not saying there's one way, but just the general concept, if that bird comes out and I gotta shoot it here, can I move there without any hindrance in my hips? It's ideal to have a shell pouch to grab your shells out of. You really don't wanna be reaching down to the ground, grabbing out of the ground. A lot of clubs, like here at ASP, we have something you can use. We have like the carpenter pouches. You can throw your shells in. If you got a brake action, it's really nice because when you're done, you throw all your holes in the side and just dump them when you're done. So there's a quick overview of the game of trap. It is simple, but if you don't understand it, it can be intimidating. But what's great about trap is youth all the way into your latter years, 80s, 90s, you can be shooting trap. It's an awesome game, can be enjoyed by the whole family. So get out to your local club, come out to ASP and get some trap shooting in. Thanks for watching. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, it's impossible to hit those shots you're not target focused on. So live target focused. See ya!